On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at shallow dignity. If we base our dignity on these shallow externals, which again, they're not bad. It's wonderful. You see a beautiful person, praise God. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we see our value, our dignity, our beauty, simply in that, we're fools. We must allow the Lord to reveal to us who we are. I want to make a distinction between using your natural gifts, which is very important, and using your supernatural gifts, which is way more important. We all have natural gifts. We have a duty to use them well. We will have to give an account at the end of our life of the natural gifts we've been giving. Given. If you're very intelligent, you should use that to glorify God, to do good, study, get a good career, and so on and so forth. That's important. It is way more important to use the supernatural gifts you have been given to build the kingdom of God. Remember the Lord Jesus said, What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You can build that huge business and have that, you know, perfect life and do so much good and achieve so many goals or whatever. But if you lose your soul, you've missed the boat completely. Supernatural gifts, gifts of the Spirit are so important. Why? Because as we heard in the second reading, we are children of the light. That's who we are. We are children of the light. Such a beautiful little revelation of our identity that we should take great pride in, that we should proclaim and remind ourselves of. I am a child of the light. It's foundational, it's essential in the spiritual life to know your identity, your dignity, your authority, and your destiny. That you are a child of the light and that you have been given authority to proclaim good news to bring the divine life to other people by the grace of God. So important in the spiritual life. You've heard me share before the beautiful story of the, the eagle's nest in the tree above a chicken coop. You remember that story? Once upon a time, there was an eagle's nest with a couple little eagle eggs under a chicken coop and a, uh, a, a, a sudden wind came and tipped the nest and one of the eagle eggs fell into the chicken coop. And when that little eagle egg hatched, a little baby eagle was born thinking he was a chicken. He thought he was a chicken so he grew up, he learned to, 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 to talk like a chicken, he learned to, to walk like a chicken, to eat like a chicken, to think like a chicken. He thought he was a chicken. But one day there was an eagle flying by and looked into the chicken coop and saw something very strange. So what's going on? There's an eagle walking around in a chicken coop. That doesn't make any sense. So he perched himself on one of the posts and said to the little eagle, Hey, what are you doing in here? You're not a chicken. You're an eagle. You can fly. Fly out of this chicken coop. Don't you know who you are? And the, the, the little eagle, he was embarrassed. He didn't know what was. He said, go, go away. I'm a chicken. I always was a chicken. I always will be a chicken. But then one day, this little eagle just felt this, this continual urge inside and decided to respond to it. He felt that he, something within him told him he could fly. So he began to beat those wings and he flew off into the big blue sky and realized it's true. I'm not a chicken, I'm an eagle. He discovered his identity. And this is a beautiful image of, of just the reality we find ourselves in. We are in a world where so many people are convinced that they're chickens. And they act like chickens and they think like chickens and they talk like chickens. And they take great pride of being, you know, king of the chicken coop. You know, I'm on one of the committees in the chicken coop, and I have a lot of respect in the chicken coop, and people take me seriously in the chicken coop, and I have one of the nicest little nests in the chicken coop. Well, big deal. It's a chicken coop. And you're not even a chicken, you're an eagle. 
What does it profit a man to gain the world if he loses sight of who he is, if he loses his soul, if he doesn't spend eternity in heaven? We're not chickens, we're eagles. Now, I want to share with you a little story. I've been reading a little book about St. Joseph Cupertino. This is a book I read when I was a young teenager, and it's what opened my eyes to discover that atheism is ridiculous, that there is indeed a God. Now, how many of you have heard of St. Joseph Cupertino? Wonderful, yeah, many of you, wonderful Italian Franciscan priest who lived many years ago. He, he, he was born in 1603 and died in 1663. And he is known as the, the, the saint who, well, first of all, he had trouble getting through school. He was barely ordained a priest. He had struggled with the studies. Um, when it came time for the exam for he and his fellow students, the bishop tested the first couple of students, and they did so well, he said, you know what, y'all pass. I don't need to interview, I don't need to test the rest. And St. Joseph Cupertino was one of those ones that kind of, you know, sneaked through the cracks, you know, because he had, he had a lot of trouble with his studies. Um, but anyways, he's also known and most known for his many levitations. He is the patron saint of those who fly, of pilots, because he levitated so much. He let it, levitated countless times. They say he would levitate almost every day at Mass for two hours, and in, in, in many times in front of countless witnesses. Now, let me, let me just, I'm going to get a little technical on you, and this is for you who have doubts, who, who have... Uh, perhaps doubts of uh, uh, temptations to agnosticism and atheism, you need to understand this. The time of Joseph Cupertino was many years ago, but it, it was a time of verification. Okay? H h historical scholars will acknowledge that that time period what was a time of, of formal inquiries that, that were... Uh, um, you could depend on, on, on what, what they found. Um, reliable, that's the word I'm looking for. Formal inquiries, they're reliable from a historical stance. The investigation into St. Joseph Cupertino's life after he died that led to his beatification, they des describe it as a severe uh, investigation. The church was very critical, very careful in, in confirming the events and the life uh, of, of St. Joseph um, Cupertino. Again, the, w w when you go through the documents, they're precise and they're detailed. So the, the notion that, well, you know, these are stories made up a long time ago, we don't know if they really happened, it's just not fair to, 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 to suppose that. Again, from a historical perspective, a, a, a scholarly perspective, the, the, the body of evidence, the body of documentation uh, that we have on the life of St. Joseph Cupertino, it's, it's, it's rock solid. And not only that, and I know, I, know I'm, I know I'm getting technical on you, but again, some of you, you need to hear this. Not only that, again, when we speak about the events of St. Joseph Cupertino's life, we're not speaking about secret little events that two or three people, two or three people saw happen in a monastery. We're speaking of, of events witnessed sometimes by crowds of people. Many uh, coming from different walks of life, many of them not even believers. And, and we have the testimonies under sworn oath of these people. And again, we, uh, the, one of the things the church is very um, uh, concerned about finding too is we have many, many stories of people experiencing complete conversion uh, through the life of St. Joseph Cupertino. People who once were unbelievers or not at all practicing their faith by encountering St. Joseph Cupertino, became devout, long-lasting Christians. And so, again, I, I give that little, that little uh, a, a, a aside. He would levitate, again, sometimes in front of crowds of people. There's, there's, there's so many beautiful stories. Um, the one I thought I'd share today is one day he was in a convent, and there were some nuns who were uh, being invest, invested as nuns. There was an investment liturgy, and uh, 
when the, the, the choir began to sing, you know, Behold the Bride of Christ, he went into one of his ecstasies. And he happened to grab the priest of the convent, who, who was the confessor, who heard the confessions. He grabbed him, began to float in the air, and dance with him in the air. Okay? crowd of people saw this happening. The nuns, everyone was like, what in the world is going on? You know, and, and so, and again, there, there's, there's story after story, mind-boggling. He is unique in the Catholic Church. You know, he's the saint who levitated a, a lot. And of course, he also has a beautiful message. He was very much into proclaiming to people the love of God the Father. He, he would say, if you knew how wonderful our Father is, your Father, you would be, you'd be in love all the time. And he urged people when they prayed the Our Father to take a moment and realize with whom you are speaking. And the great privilege it is to speak to our Heavenly Father and how wonderful it is that he gives us his undivided loving attention. He says, if you could only come to understand the love of God the Father, again, your, your, your life would be filled with constant love. Um, but anyways, I bring him up as an example of a person who definitely knew he wasn't a chicken. But again, an example of someone who not only knew, but he's a sign to us given by God. He's a sign to us that God has given to us to, to remind us, hey, you have a wonderful identity. You are indeed a child of the light. You were made, you are made in the image and likeness of God. You were made for eternity. Your soul is indeed spiritual and immortal. That is who you are and that is whose you are. And if you have trouble believing that, look at people the likes of St. Joseph Cupertino, who remind us of our identity, our dignity, our authority, and our destiny. We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to Father Mark Goring. Another wonderful example of someone who, whose life proclaims to us our deeper dignity is Saint Mother Teresa. Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who just shocked the world with her selfless love for the poorest of the poor. But it's interesting, I, mem I remember later in Mother Teresa's life, there were people who commented. You'd see, you'd see these beautiful pictures of Mother Teresa, uh, but very, a very wrinkled face. An elderly woman, with a wrinkled face, a tanned face, and no makeup. And the comment, even in the secular world, was, or the question was, who is more beautiful? Mother Teresa or the latest, you know, supermodel lady out there? And the, the honest thinking person would acknowledge that in Mother Teresa, there was an evident beauty that caused our souls and our hearts to swell. No one would deny, no one who, who had any sense would deny that Mother Teresa was such a beautiful woman. Not taking away from, from the more you know, shallow physical beauty. Physical beauty, it's a good thing. It's wonderful. I comb my hair the odd time. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with, with physical beauty. But if we base our identity and our dignity on beauty, which, by the way, you, you heard the, the, the reading from Proverbs. Um, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. And Proverbs is praising uh, the, the, the worthy woman. It's, chapter, uh, verse 30 says, Charm 
is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. This should be so clear in our hearts and our minds, especially in a world, partly because of marketing and, and, and advertising, that overly glorifies physical beauty. As if that's the most important thing in life. As if that's all that matters. When I wake up in the morning, I have a zit on my nose, my life is over, you know. Might as well hide and say, or, you know, whatever. If we base our dignity on these shallow externals, which again, they're not bad. It's wonderful. You see a beautiful person, praise God. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we see our value, our dignity, our beauty, simply in that, we're fools. We must allow the Lord to reveal to us who we are. The wonderful dignity and authority uh, He has given to us. And when the Lord does this work in our life, everything changes. Everything changes in the gospel today. The, the people who use their talents right, the Lord said, come, enter into the joy of the Lord. There's a joy that we are meant to have that is not dependent on whether or not you're having a bad hair day. There's the joy that the Lord wants us to have that is not dependent on whether you have a zit on your nose today or whatever else. Whether you passed your exams, whether you can afford a nice car, whether you've reached your goals and, goals and accomplishments in life. There's a joy that a person who, who has experienced tragedy in his or her life that can enjoy that is far greater than a person who, again, has these, these, these shallow worldly joys. And we see this especially in the lives of God's closest friends, his saints. And the Lord is calling us to be his close friends, to know who we are and to know whose we are. Brothers and sisters, I want to give the opportunity today to anyone who has not discovered or had, has revealed to them. The Lord, you have not allowed the Lord to reveal to you your identity, your dignity, your authority, and destiny. Because, brothers and sisters, this is revelation. It comes from heaven. You can read all the books you want. You can listen to all the preaching you want. But at the end of the day, it's God's light that gives you light. And when His light comes into our souls and uh, spills out into our minds and even into our senses, everything changes. As we heard in, the, in, in First Thessalonians, the, we, we come out of darkness into the light. And the joy that the Lord promises us that no one can take away that is complete, that joy comes and makes its home in us because that joy is the Holy Spirit. And if we wish to have this life and light within us, what we must do is we must give our lives to Jesus the Savior of the world. Simple as that. Jesus said, I will not turn away anyone who comes to me. And whoever comes to me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus is indeed the way, the truth, and the life? If there's anyone here who today you'd love to you, give your life to Jesus so he can pour out this light into your soul, the Holy Spirit. The Lord is asking you to repent of your sins, to say you're sorry for all the, the things you've done that have hurt others, hurt yourself and hurt the Lord. He's asking you to try to live in a new way, to walk according to, to, to God's word. And if you're willing to do that, the Lord will accept the offer of your heart to him. And he will come in and make you new. The Lord says, you are a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. So if there is anyone here this morning who's saying, you know what? I want to be filled with the light of God in the depths of my soul. I invite you to come forward now. And I will lead you in a simple prayer, inviting Jesus into your heart, into your life. 
repenting of your sins, committing to trying to live a new life. And then all of us here will pray for you that you be filled with the Holy Spirit and that your life be radically and wonderfully changed. Our Lord Jesus also said, Come to me, all you who labor and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest for your souls. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. He who believes in me will not thirst. Brothers and sisters, you are approaching the one who loves you and died for you. So repeat after me now in prayer. Dear Jesus, I love you. I believe in you. And I thank you that you died on the cross for me. Jesus, I'm sorry for all of my sins. Please forgive me. Have mercy on me. And help me to walk in a new way. Jesus, come into my heart today. I give you my life. I give you all that I have and am. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, I will follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are going to ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you now. Here in this sanctuary, in the Father's house, before his, his altar. I invite all my brothers and sisters in Christ who've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, extend your arms, and let's pray for these, our brothers and sisters, that the Lord may radically and wonderfully change their lives through the power of His love and His Spirit. Father in heaven, I thank you for these, your children, who've opened their hearts to your Son, Jesus, today. I pray a blessing upon them. I ask you, Lord, to let them experience this joy, your joy, Lord, the joy that never goes away, even in difficult times, even in times of sorrow and mourning, that deep abiding joy of the kingdom. Make our prayer in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on Shallow Dignity, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of program 1726. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at what is right and wrong. Children, they know what's right and wrong. It's written in their hearts. It's written in each one of our hearts. Now some of us, again, we can, if we sin against the truth, we can darken our conscience so that we can no longer see what is right and wrong. One of the most well-known verses of Scripture is John 3.16, where it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Two of those key words are, God loved us, He loved us, and He gave. And He gave to us so graciously and so generously in giving us Jesus. We as Christians are called also to be people who give give of our time, our talent, and our finances. 
Luke uh, 6.38 says this, and we have a promise when we give. God will bless us in return. We don't do it for that reason, but God nevertheless blesses us. Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. They will pour it into your lap, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured unto you. We are reminded to be givers. And not only that, Scripture reminds us to be happy about it, for God loves a cheerful giver. We are to give, and we're to give from a cheerful heart, back to God, and to help in any way we can. We are so thankful for Food for Life viewers who have so faithfully supported Food for Life through the years. Whether for many years or if you're a newer viewer, we just appreciate your kind support. We hope and we pray that you will continue to work with us in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Food for Life is not funded by any one organization. It's done through the collective efforts of many people, including people just like yourself. Without your help and without the grace of God, we simply could not continue. If you've watched Food for Life for many years and you've never written in, we would especially ask that you prayerfully consider standing with us, for perhaps through a one-time gift perhaps through a monthly donation. We have many convenient ways to support the ministry. You can write in through the mail. You can make a, a donation online through our Food for Life website. You can uh, get some information on a monthly plan if you would choose to support us that way. We have two types of plans, pre-authorized plans through bank or credit card, and it makes it very, very convenient and easy. You don't even have to think about it. So if you are interested, if God's pulling at your heart at all to stand with us, we would invite you to write into Food for Life. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1726 and today's topic, Father Mark Goring on Shallow Dignity. Food for Life is a non-profit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax-deductible donation to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. We ask you to consider a regular monthly donation, either by post-dated checks or through our website, to help fulfill the Great Commission from Matthew 28:19. Go and make disciples of all nations. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life, and our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. Thanks to your faithful prayers and tax-deductible financial support, Food for Life is the longest-running Catholic television program in Canada. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at what is right and wrong. Children, they know what's right and wrong. It's written in their hearts. It's written in each one of our hearts. Now some of us, again, we can, if we sin against the truth, we can darken our conscience so that we can no longer see what is right and wrong. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry.